Hi everybody and welcome to our Fireside 3 card tarot. Heads up for the week of September 8th, 24th, 2023. Oops, where is Facebook? Oh my god, drive me nuts. Um, there we are, there we are. Um, so welcome, welcome. Whether you are on the Facebook Live, we're here actually on Monday morning this week, a little different time and day than we normally do. Um, so whether you're catching us live or the replay, whether that's Facebook or YouTube or my website, wherever, just know that this video is finding you exactly when it's meant to find you, to give you exactly what it is that you need to hear right now from your deceased loved ones, angels, and spirit guides. And so this week we are working from the Angel Wisdom Tarot deck by one of my favorite authors, Radley Valentine. Radley Valentine. And so I'm going to show you the cards, uh, give you that time to kind of tune into your own intuition and, um, and really see where you're drawn, what, what speaks to you, what, uh, what really, where, where are you drawn the most. So here is card number one. It's card number one. Card number one. Here is card number two. Card number two. Here is card number three. Card number three. So while I'm giving you a, a little bit of time to just like really feel into your intuition, that kind of thing. I just want to put out a big thank you to the people who attended the message circle last night, Sunday evening. It was a wonderful circle, really high vibration, and just some amazing, amazing messages that came through. Keep your eyes open for new things developing. Um, I'm going to be at the Mind Body Soul Expo in December, so I'll be putting out heads up about that as we get closer. Um, for local people, that's going to be up in Saratoga. And um, I will be having another circle in January, so all of that will be to come, to come as the days go. So um, without any further ado, let's have a look at card number one from our Angel Wisdom Tarot deck. Card number one, actually, I have to say for the Two of Fire, um, this is my favorite Two of Fire of any deck I've seen, and I have several tarot decks myself. I've worked with others as well than the ones I have. This is my favorite. So. I love that we have this card this week for card number one. So um, the two of fire in traditional tarot often really uh, hints to gives us hints about partnerships, um, creative energies coming together. And actually, it's kind of neat. Like, like we can't make this stuff up um, when we talk about synchronicity. I just mentioned to you all that I'm going to be at the Mind Body Soul Expo. I'm actually going to be partnering up with a great friend of mine who is a Reiki practitioner. We're going to be sharing a booth. So that's exactly the kind of thing this card can be talking about. Um, uh, j just like what I'm doing with my good friend, we're going to be sharing a booth so we can really bring our services to more people and, and do that together. And it's a lot of fun that way. So for you this week, where in your life might there be like-minded people who have a passion very similar to yours where you can team up and the results are greater when you team up with one people or one people, <laughs> one person or more than one uh, person. And so the results are greater than even if you were to, let's say you were to total up the results of each person working individually, that total output, those results are greater um, by people teaming up and working together. So where could there be a partnership on the horizon for you? Uh, this week feels very strongly for business, for business, um, whether that's paid or just, just a serious hobby maybe. Um, could be romance. This week I feel, uh, card number one people, I feel like if this is talking about romance, then you already know about it, something you're already aware of. Um, but for those of you that that if I just, if I were to say romance, you're going, no, I don't think that's me. Then in that, if that's the case for you this week, and my, my strong sense here is that this is really talking about um, shared goals, shared passions, things that are fun. Like again, great example, my friend and I are going to be teaming up at the Mind Body Soul Expo. And for both of us, it's a business that we both do. We get paid for it, but we do it because we love it and we enjoy it. So it's fun for us too. Like, in other words, you could say that for both my friend and I, our business grew out of a hobby, began as just a hobby that we did for fun and became a business for both of us. So, and the other thing I want to point out about this is that the one gentleman really has the other guy's back. Um, but again, they're a team because the gentleman sitting in the front and looks like a, like a tree stump there uh, is literally holding the world in his hands. And that's because they're working together. There's trust, there's common goals, 
and there's mutual respect there. Um, I'm going to finally, for the end of this message, I'm going to read you the, um, for the end of the message connected to this card, I'm going to read you some of the words on the card. Take the next steps. So whatever next steps you've been thinking about in your career, business, or maybe just a serious hobby, or maybe it's all of those things for you, this is the angels giving you a gentle, loving push to take those next steps, partnering with others who share your dreams. So take the next steps, partnering with others who share your dreams. That's our message with card number one this week. So moving on to card number two. Were you drawn to card number two? Um, We've got our Eight of Swords, and before we get into the message with this, the first thing I, I really find myself saying a lot when I work with this deck of cards is that whenever we have a card from the Suit of Swords from this particular card deck, we are looking at a softer energy than we traditionally see when we're in the Suit of Swords. Um, so what I mean by that is that if you think of the traditional meaning of the Eight of Swords, it's still here. In other words, the author and illustrator paid homage to that, but we're looking at a softened energy. So thinking about our traditional Eight of Swords, we often are talking about a message of, geez, you're only holding the chains over your own hands. Just, just come on, remove the chains, remove your own blindfold. Now, what I love about this, and again, I just love what the author and illustrator have done with this deck. This woman is beginning to remove her own blindfold and she's beginning to see that the sword, the gate is already open and the sword is hers. In other words, she might not even need it, but no one is holding a sword up to her as a control mechanism. No, she's taking a peek. That's her sword. It's there if she needs it. And she's beginning to see this. In other words, she's not behind that blindfold, afraid to take it off, but she's taking the first steps, which is smart. You know, if you, card number two people, feel as if you've been putting your toes in the water for a long time, maybe it's not necessarily that you have held yourself back from taking action, but maybe you've been taking calculated risks. Maybe you've been cautious for good reasons and you're beginning to take off that blindfold. In other words, you can see what you didn't see before. You're ready to pick up that sword if you need it and come right out of that gate for whatever you're gonna be doing. This card is especially relevant right now with that message with um, planets beginning to go direct. Mercury is out of retrograde and has been for a few days now. So we're going to be out of the post shadow of Mercury. Uh, Venus is now direct. Um, there is another planet that's going retrograde. I'm going to check what that is really quick because for some folks, I, I just have to remember which planet we're talking about, which is why I'm going to check. For some folks, that's actually going to be a good thing. And what I mean by that is that this planet, I just have to see which one it is, um, for some folks isn't going to mean slow down communication and feeling like you're pedaling backwards. It's not going to mean that. It would be, oh, and we'll talk about Saturn in a moment too. Saturn is retrograde from June 18th to November 4th. We'll get to Saturn in just a, a little bit. Jupiter, uh, my apologies, Jupiter just went retrograde a couple weeks ago. I want to mention in connection to our Eight of Swords where we have this um, situation where we're, we have been peeking under the blindfold, being able to see what we couldn't see before. Um, with Jupiter going retrograde, there are some situations where Jupiter being retrograde means that our male energies are sort of dampened down. That's going to be a huge advantage to us right now because we're coming off of a Venus retrograde. In fact, I want to say it could have been the same day or one day different that Venus went direct and Jupiter went retrograde. That's actually great because Venus is the planet of love. And so if you think about Venus being retrograde, that could cause us to question our decisions to be unsure about love. Jupiter is a male energy which tends to get maybe hot and aggressive when it's threatened. So Jupiter going retrograde is going to have the effect to slow us down in a good way, to encourage us to think before we act, to not make impulsive decisions when it comes to love and relationships. And so if we think about all of that, combined with our Eight of Swords, which is this um, character here beginning to really see things and be ready to take action, that's exactly where you should be, card number two people. You should be 
taking those initial steps to taking action, not acting impulsively. So card number two, people, you're exactly where you should be, even if it doesn't feel that way. Even if it feels like you've been pedaling backwards, you, you haven't been, okay? Um, with all of that in mind, let's um, look at card number three, and we'll also talk a little bit about Saturn. So uh, I love card number three, and in fact, I'm, I'm personally really happy that the angels saved this card for last, because it's I think the most positive card we've got this week. We have the Ace of Earth. I especially, again, this is another one of those cards that this is my favorite of all time of any deck, and I have a lot of decks that I really like and love and respect. I like this because she's following the Yellow Brick Road, and so many people that I know, in fact, everyone I know has seen the Wizard of Oz, we're going to say follow the Yellow Brick Road, and we're going to think of the Yellow Brick Road as like the road to everything we want. And um, card number three people, and anyone who re resonates with this message, that's exactly what you're doing. You have taken the first steps on your yellow brick road. You've got your, your bunny. <laughs> or in my case, it's a hamster, a snake, and two cats. Um, you've got your trusted animal or animals with you on your journey. You've got the books that you need. Um, and sometimes your books could be YouTube videos, that's what I use, or blogs, or just any source of information from reliable experts, reliable content, you've got those advantages to, on this journey that you're embarking on. Card number three, people, you are supported. And it's just magical. Look at the beautiful foliage that you're going to see along your path. And look at your destination. I love the way this card is designed because that could, uh, certainly could be a castle, but that could be a government building. That could be an, a big office building. It's it's beautiful if it is. I mean, personally, I, I don't work in an office, but if I was going to work in an office, that's the kind I'd want to work in. So the message here, card number three, people, is that wherever you're going, this this path that you've started, you, you've entered your yellow brick road, and um, you're going to get to Oz. Whatever your Oz is, only you're going to stay there because there's actually no place like this home where you're going. You're in it for the long haul. Card number three, people, you have chosen wisely. You have done your due diligence. And you may feel like you're just starting out, but the truth is you've been preparing this for a very, very long, preparing for this, I should say, for a very, very long time. And finally, um, the archangel that's connected to this card, and I'm drawn to, to say this is Raziel, which is really cool, in fact, because Raziel just last evening came through at my circle as one of the angels. Call on Archangel Raziel, card number three, people. Um, I will give an Archangel for the other two cards in case some of you listening are going, well, I want mine. I'll do that at the very end. Before we do, I just want to briefly talk about Saturn. Saturn being retrograde, what that's done for most people, if not everyone, is cause us to have much more confusion than we typically would have about our career path and where we're going. Now, the Saturn retrograde is June 18th to November 4th, and uh, this has happened for me, and I know it's happened for so many people. A much higher than usual state of questioning our work, whether we're really good at it, whether it's going to work for us, whether we're making a difference for those of you that are in helping professions. That's the effect that Saturn retrograde is having on a lot of people. Um, you know how we so often hear people say, don't make rash decisions during a retrograde? Don't make rash career decisions while Saturn is retrograde. Not, not, in other words, the, the word rash decision. If there's a decision you've been contemplating for a long time, months or years, go ahead and take action. But um, don't make any sudden impulsive decisions during Saturn retrograde because November 4th, actually right around that time for all of you, that are feeling any confusion about career, that should be much more clear right around that time, early November, or early to mid-November at the most. So just keep all of that in mind. And then finally, let's quickly go over those archangels. So we already said for card number three people, we've got Razi. Oh, there's a little code in the corner there. Card number uh, one people, your angel would be Zadkiel. Makes a lot of sense. That's our archangel for balance. If you're getting into a partnership of any kind, you want to stay balanced. Finally, Card number two, people, Archangel Chamuel, or Chamuel, which makes perfect sense because when we look at this, per we've got an energy of someone peeking out from what they couldn't see. 
Chamuel is considered the eyes of God, so it helps you to see things clearly. So call on Chamuel at this point, card number two, people. So just a quick recap, Archangel Zadkiel, particularly for card number one, people. Archangel Chamuel, particularly for card number two, people. And Archangel Raziel, particularly for card number three, people. Thank you uh, so, so much, everyone, for being here. Um, and if something in here really spoke to you, I'd love to hear about it. Share in the comment what really uh, what really uh, hit home for you. If there was indeed something that just was like, wow, uh, whatever that was, the cards, the, the planet stuff, whatever it was. Um, if we are not already connected on Facebook, send me a friend request. Um, check out my website, heatherlcoleman.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lots of good content there and um, yoga meditations, lots of good stuff going on. Everybody, thank you so much and have a great week. Namaste.